morning, everybody. My name is Lynn Barbie, and today I'd like to talk to you about succulents, a, a type of plant that holds moisture. Um, if you were fortunate enough to pick up a kit at the Whiting Public Library, we'll be talking a little bit about what's in there as well and how to do your dish garden. Uh, succulents are the perfect plant to get started with because they are very low maintenance. They don't need a lot of care. Um, I have a succulent behind me here that I water maybe once a month. I just throw some water on it with whatever's left in my water bottle. Uh, and it's been doing very well that way. Uh, they're very easy to propagate, which means make more plants. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about that, I hope too. What succulents need are good drainage more than anything. Uh, good drainage, they don't like to be wet. They need indirect light, although some succulents can handle more light than others and they need water, but not too much water. Most, most houseplants in general get too much water and that's more likely what's gonna cause a houseplant to die, but specifically succulents do not need a lot. You can tell if your plant needs water, if it starts to look like this, it gets very soft leaves, um, kind of droopy. And uh, because succulents, because they hold moisture, have, should have nice plump leaves. And if you're unsure, um, if you should water your succulent, just wait. Okay, start with a container. It does not have to be very deep. This is going to be very similar to what your finished product might look like. I call them succulent parfaits. I like the layered look there. Um, you don't have to have gravel or rocks, uh, but it will help with in case you do overwater because there are no drainage holes in these pots. Um, your kit is going to have a container. Um, and uh, it might be different sizes. You could use whatever you have at home if you like to. There will be some gravel in it, uh, some pretty rocks, but you could put those in the bottom or you could put those at the top just for looks. You'll have some succulent soil in there and um, then three little succulent plants. I think they're like two inch, uh, two and a half inch size. You could add whatever embellishments you want. You could put little tiny fairy garden things on there. You could put little rocks. You could put those little umbrellas you get in a drink, uh, dollhouse things, fairy garden things, your kids' toys, whatever you want in there. I planted these a few years ago. These were my son's little matchbox cars. Looks like very well loved and worn. Um, that, uh, like I mentioned, you could start cuttings very easily. Just take a piece of a plant. That little um, orange ball right there is actually a grafted piece that fell off of another uh, of a cactus and I took it off of there and the bottom had calloused over a little bit and it sat there for a long time. Actually that little truck lasted a long time. This was right after they I planted them. That lasted a really long time until I watered it under the kitchen faucet and the force of the water kind of was too much for it. I uh, planted this for a friend who likes model trains. Not a very good picture but you get the idea. This is actually a candle holder I put some rocks in there. You can see that this got a little bit too much water in there. Uh, there's no drainage, like I said, so um, yep, be careful. Um, I probably could have tipped that over on the side and got rid of extra water. And, uh, and my challenge is always, how low can you go? How small can you go? Um, so you can see that on the very left, that little seashell garden also lasted for a very, very long time. Eventually these plants will get bigger, of course, and, um, and, and that, that those little arrangements would have to be changed, okay? So let's stop our sharing here and talk a little bit about, hi, um, talk a little bit uh, and, and actually do some planting, okay? So got a container. This one will hold probably three plants. Um, if you have something at home that you wanna try or have something smaller like this, it will only hold one. And uh, unless you cut them up, divide them up a little bit. Succulent soil is always the best to, thing to use um, because it has better drainage. Now, I, like I said, you'll have rocks at the bottom. You do not have to. Um, you do not have to use rocks at the bottom. But just in case you do put too much water in there, <clears throat> that will help give a place for the water to sit. <coughs> so I have rocks at the bottom here. And I think just for fun, I'm gonna put a pretty rock sideways like this here. And then maybe another one right there. 
and I'm going to put some succulent soil in there like that. And sometimes it helps just for looks to have your plant actually sitting on top of the soil. <coughs> Remember, I said they do not need a lot of moisture and they don't, so that you don't have to have lots of soil around them. This is the selection I picked up at work. And uh, I work at the Home Depot, 21 years in the garden department at Home Depot. Um, so we've got all these nice collections, just like in any um, garden design or container design, you wanna have some variety. So we've got things here that have a little bit of a bluish cast to them. This one is actually called blue chalk and it's got an upright look to it. And then we've got something like this little guy, which is called Crassula marginata, <laughs> marginalis rubra variegata, variegata meaning variegated leaves. And also rubra meaning it has a little bit of a reddish cast to it. This one here is called watch chain. It does look like little tiny links on a chain, doesn't it? So you've got, that's called a fine texture. And then something over here, like this plant, which is called flapjacks, has a bigger leaf and it's called big, te large texture. Okay, so let's see here. I'm going to take, I love the little rosette ones. So I'm going to take this little rosette one, Echeveria lime and chili, lime and chili, I'll take it apart. Now you'll see it's got all that soil on there. That actually has far more soil than that plant needs. Okay, they put them that way in the pot just so there's extra in there. But if I pull it apart like this, you can see all that coming off and the roots are actually right in there. So you don't need a lot. I'm gonna take that off and I'm gonna put it right on top of all that soil, just like that. Okay, right up against the edge. And then let's take something that has some um, different color to it. Maybe I'll show you this one here because this one, the variegata rubra, you can take apart, look at that. I'm gonna take a piece off there. The rosette ones won't be able to, you won't be able to divide those because there's not, no way to divide those at this stage, but got extra little pieces like that. So I'm actually gonna take one, maybe I'll put one on this side and maybe let's put another one on that side, shall we? Okay, so we've got two colors, two star, um, textures, two forms, whatever you wanna call it. And then this last one, I like this one because it's already gonna bloom. Yes, yeah, sometimes they bloom. And uh, so I'm gonna take that out of the pot. Looks like I've already done that. And uh, so it doesn't have very much soil on there. And again, I'm gonna put that right on top. Okay, there we go. Hope you can see that. And then um, you'll have to fill in the little cracks on the side with some soil. Now, sometimes I don't have enough hands to do this. If I wasn't showing you on a video, I would put this down and do it. But it helps sometimes to take a little piece of paper somehow like this and make a funnel so that you can aim that, that uh, potting soil in there right where you want it and just fill in the cracks right between. It doesn't need a lot of soil in there right between these plants. And then when you're all done, you can put some little pretty rocks on top, stick in one of those little party umbrellas that you got in a drink and uh, just have some fun with it. Oh, and I mentioned uh, propagating too. Sometimes you can take, like I said, not so much with these, um, this type, something like this, you could actually take one of the leaves off though. Let's do that here. Take the leaf off like this and uh, let's brush it off, clean it a little bit. And right now it's got a fresh cut at the end, but if you let that sit overnight, that's called callousing over and what gets callus on it. And then you can stick that in soil and that will propagate new cuttings. I did that with one of, with this a few years ago. Well, maybe a year ago. And you could see maybe there's little teeny tiny leaves growing off there already. And I think I also mentioned, of course, like this one here that I just divided into two pieces. Now, this is not gonna stay just like this forever, obviously. This rosette's gonna get bigger. These little things are actually going to hang a little bit. They make nice little hanging basket plants, um, but have fun with it. <laughs> One nice thing about uh, gardening and growing things is things just keep changing and growing. You guys have a great day.